something special for you today. We got a future, future legend. Don't want to jinx him too much, but by the way this young man has been performing, he's on his way. Everybody, I'd like to introduce you to our starting quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke. What's up, Canes fans? I'm excited to have a great year this year, and I'm excited to partner with DJ and Don Love. Check this out, man. Um, I ain't gonna lie, I Wikipedia'd you. You're like a mystery man. A mystery man? I looked it up, it said your name, it said you were from Connecticut, <laughs> it said you played quarterback. Yes, sir. What is that about? Are you, are you very talkative? Do you like to go out into the media and speak, or are you more of a private type person? I'm more of a private type person, you know, just go about my business and, and work hard and just lead by example. Have you always been like that? I've always been like that. I always just, just keep to myself and, and work hard. Well, you do realize that, man, it's going to get very, very tough if you keep performing the way you've been performing. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Um, like, I mean, listen, listen, hold on. Yeah. You play for one of the largest yeah. programs in the country. You're in Miami and you're balling, right? Mm. You ended last year's season with uh, six 300-plus yard games, 20 yeah. touchdowns. It's going to be microphones in your face. People yeah. going to want to get to know you. Yeah. I mean, I kind of got used to it now. I mean, before it was like, wow. It, it hit me right away, but now I'm used to it. Um, you know, I've, I'm used to speaking in front of large crowds, in front of the whole team, and you guys right here with the camera. So, I mean, I got used to it. So are you like that with the media? What's, what's, the, what's the relationship with your teammates, right? Because you see the C yep. on the shirt, so you're a captain, right? So you got to be somewhat of a vocal leader. But I played with multiple leaders, and some were very, very vocal, rah, rah, rah. And, you know, I don't compare people, but – I'll be honest, Dorsey was the leader of the team while I was there, and he wasn't very vocal. He wasn't very rah, 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 but yeah. when he did speak, people listened. Is that how you see yourself? Yeah, I see myself like that. You know, I was at the Peyton Manning camp this summer, and, or the Manning camp, Manning Academy, and uh, Peyton Manning told all the quarterbacks that you can't give rah, rah speeches all the time, or they just think that it's just another speech. People aren't going to listen, and they're just going to, just hear it, go through one ear and out the other. So you just got to pick and choose when you feel like it, it's time for, needed for that speech. So um, what was that experience like? Because, you know, I tell people all the time that when I went to the Combine, it was eye-opening for me, mm -hmm. right? Because they choose the 32 best linebackers. They put you guys all in a box. Coming up, every man thinks that they're the man, right? It wasn't until I stood across or was in front of 31 other versions of me that I realized, like, wow, I really got to put the time in and step up my game and perform. So what was that experience like for you? Yeah, you know, it hit me real fast. You know, I got thrown in there in the, in the game uh, after Derek's unfortunate injury and uh, it hit me fast, you know, just had to step up, you know, had to be ready. There's no not being ready for the game. So I was prepared like I was a starter. Um, and my teammates did a great job of helping me uh, become that guy and become that leader. So from Connecticut, how did you get here? How did you get to the U? How did you get to Dade County? <laughs> I mean, I felt like it was the best opportunity for me, you know, uh, school-wise, football-wise. Just, um, I mean, obviously the weather, uh, it's a lot different from where I'm from. So, uh, But I feel like I had the best opportunity to, to play early here and, and win games, and uh, that really just stood out to me out of all the other schools I had. So in high school, were you always a Miami Hurricane fan? Or did you not start looking into them until they looked into you? Because honestly, that's how it was for me. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't bleed orange and green when I was younger. I paid attention to whatever program was in the area that I grew up in. But you know, once the University of Miami caught my eye, it was hard to take it off. Yeah, exactly. Same situation for me. I mean, I never knew about the history of Miami Hurricanes until I really started looking into the school. You know, I, I always grew up a UConn fan. Um, I mean, they were good back in the day. Um, when I was younger, Dan Olavsky, uh, a couple other guys that I went to the games, I was like, man, I want to play at UConn. <laughs> and now I'm here at Miami. So, yeah, it wasn't really until they started looking to me where I was like, oh, wow, I could really go play at Miami. I got a statistic that's going to blow your mind. The University of Miami has only had one season where they've won double-digit games in the last 17 years. How does that sit with you? It doesn't feel good, you know what I mean? We got to change that, bro. Yeah, you got to change it. We got to change it. And listen, I'm not we putting it all on it. your shoulders, yeah. right? Because I'll, I'll be honest, too. Like, when we were kicking in all, all cylinders and the University of Miami was dominant, a lot of that had to do with the alumni base, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, and that's what I love about uh, what, what Kristen Ball is doing. Uh, he's opening the doors back up. Guys are coming around the facility, and guys are, are being a part of that. Um, is there anybody, um, I'll say a, a alum that has – that, that you've met that's kind of impressed you and kind of take you under his wing or just kind of give you some advice? Well, there's been a few. I mean, I've talked to Bernie Kozar um, a few times. You know, he's came to practice. He was there in, in the spring. I uh, texted with him a few times and then uh, sat and talked with Steve Walsh for a while. Um, those two guys right there, I uh, spent good time with them and they really gave me some good advice. That's what's up, man. So yeah. let's, let's dive into this NIL, all right? Like, it, it, it's crazy. Um, you know, the, the stories that I see, uh, you know, there's some kid in, in high school right now that's getting, they say he's getting offered $8 million. There's some other guy over here, they're getting this and that. Like, uh, your personal experience of it, right? Like, when you came into college, was NIL, hold on, was NIL relevant at the time? It was starting to become like a conversation, I think. Started to be a conversation. But I, don't, I really didn't pay attention to it at all. Like I, I didn't make my decision to come here just because of the, because Florida was the first. I like NIL. that. I like that, man. I like yeah, that. So, yeah. I like that, man. Um, I know there has to be some some crazy mm -hmm. NI experiences. Uh, you got to give me one, 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 one story, and and when I mean story, like just just maybe a proposal that shocked you when you know uh, your representation came back and was like, hey, such and such meat sausages want to do it. Whatever yeah, yeah. with you, man. I know you've had to have at least one or two. I mean, like the commercials. I've, I've done a few commercials. and um, I, I saw mean, your commercials, I, yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a big fan of doing all that stuff. You know, I'd, I'd rather just go work hard and, and get money that way. But um, it, the game's changing right now, and that's part of the business now. So you got to do what you got to do. And you know what? I'll, I'll give you a little advice when it comes to NIL and it comes to sponsorships. You know, um, a check is a check. Right. Honestly, we all love money as a check as a check. But, you know, I always try to tell guys, make sure that you pair yourself with brands that, you know, you think match your brand and then also things that you naturally do. Because if if, if you're a hunter and, you know, Carnhart or, you know, some bow and arrow company or whatever wants to throw a check at you and bring you money, it's going to be so normal and natural, right? Because you're not going to have to force and, and uh make up content, right? Like, uh, you know, the, the best content that exists right now is individuals that just really film themselves doing what they naturally do. Yeah. Van Dyne, how'd you get that name? I don't know, I just seen people call me that on Twitter or whatever. Um, I think on Kane's football, they posted something that said Van Dyne on the back gotcha. after, after the season or after one of the games and then people just started calling me that, so. You trademarked well, it. it. Yeah. You trademarked it. Yeah, Sean, help me out. You own it. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. man. That's that next right there, man. Yeah. Man, duh. You feel me? You see, we, we put a little spoof on it. We put the Y in me. And I think that's what makes, um, you know, this partnership that we're doing just so fluid, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know this, but this will be one of the first NIL deals done with a collegiate athlete use a name, name, image, and likeness, and also with the school marks. Uh, that's, that's a pretty huge accomplishment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with the University of Miami, we always pride ourselves to be in first, inventing swag, and uh, I just, you know, from my side, the reason that I wanted to partner with you was, of course, for the name, yeah. right? There was a lot of uh, symmetry there, but then also um, just build the brand, right? Um, I'm trying to do future NILs with as many players, student athletes that I can, right? Because, you know, I've always thought that players should have been gotten paid or had some form of compensation. Um, believe it or not, the year I won the national championship, I think we got a, uh, I think we got a blanket, we got a Sharpie, and we got a flip coin. And like one of those huge old school handheld cameras, right? Yeah. And you see your little gift box and then you read in the papers and you see, yo, the school is you know, pulling in this type of cash, this type of money, and you look and like there's an imbalance to it. So, you know, I'm I'm glad that uh, you know the NCAA has stepped up and are allowing kids to go out there and you know again earn a living. Because at the end of the day, the amount of money that we get or that you guys get, and you're not allowed to work, mm -hmm. right? It's it's, it's kind of hard because exactly. you still want to be a college student and yeah. live you know a normal type life. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, I think us college athletes bring a lot of revenue to the to the fans and the school in general, especially college football. You know, just um, I think it kind of gets like the NIL rules is like you said before, like coming out of high school, so and so gets eight million, ten million dollars to go to the school, but they haven't even played a college snap. So it needs yeah. to be a little balance. Hey, you know what? That. I don't. I don't. I think that's going to set itself straight, yeah. right? Because what you're going to have is you're going to have several individuals that I guess we'll say pay up front for someone and they're not going to perform, yeah. right? The individuals that are kicking out this money at the end of the day, they're great, great businessmen. Yeah. And, you know, once you have a handful of situations where that situation doesn't work out, I think it's going to set itself straight. But I'll be honest, if I was a current player on the team, and I was getting X, and then there was a high school kid, and they gave him two, three X, it would, I would feel some type of way, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, because every blood, sweat, and tears, you ain't ran, you ain't done nothing, exactly. right? It, it's no different than first day of training camp where the, the veterans get to sit down first, mm -hmm. right? And the incoming freshman, you got to wait to find your seat, yeah. right? Which, same thing to me where it's like, you know, you don't get your name on the back of your jersey or, you know, you don't get that you on your helmet. All these different traditions that, uh, you know, programs have, right? Yeah. I hope that, you know, that doesn't get lost, right? Um, because I'm not going to lie, like the, the hazing, uh, the earning the right, to me, it was all a part of it. Of course, sometimes it did get, you know, out of hand. Mm -hmm. But on every level that I've been on, from high school, college to pro, I came in as a nobody no matter what people said about me on the outside, yeah. but within that locker room and with that team, I was a nobody and I had to earn, I had to earn everything, right? right? And so I hope that tradition stays, right? Because you're gonna have an imbalance of individuals where, you know, it's, it's like that in the league yeah. because it's, it's hard to tell somebody what to do when they make more money than you, right? Yeah. Like that's the biggest imbalance within the NFL. And that's why, you know, coaching in the NFL is very, very tough because you're a linebacker position coach. You're making 800000 1.1. Your player making $15 million. Yeah. You know what I mean? How do you, <laughs> how do you tell that individual what to do, yeah. right? And exactly. it's not bossing them around, man. You got to earn their respect. Yeah. And, you know, that's the one thing when it comes to college sports and just sports in general. I hope that that never gets lost where everybody still has to come in uh, day one and earn that respect. The Patriots... You know, the whole do your job, uh, you know, nobody cares what you did last year. Nobody cares what you did last game. Nobody cares what you did last play. And anytime I've ever been on teams that kind of had that model and that mindset, those were the teams that always performed very well and stepped to the plate every time. Yeah, I think, especially with Coach Cristobal, he knows that. Um, he, and he's all about business, all about work. So um, I'm, not, I'm not worried with him that I mean, he's going to get off track with that type of thing. And especially – him building the culture around the players, and the players know that too. So, so give me your take on the culture. You know, bring the people inside the walls. What what does it feel like at practice? What does it feel like in the locker room? What are the messages that the coaches are preaching over and over? Yeah, and it's just the intensity. Uh, when Coach Chris Ball first walked into the the meeting room, the team meeting room, you just felt a different type of atmosphere. Like there was no joking around, no playing around, just all business and, and that's what it has been uh, ever since that first day he's walked in and you know I feel like um, his, his message is every day he says how you do anything is how you do everything and I feel like as a team we really embedded that that message and, and really brought that upon us uh, and made that a part of our culture and um, he, he's really experienced that all playing at, at Miami and you know coaching back in the day and now he's really came come back and, and made it something special. One of the biggest differences uh, that I see or that I've seen with the program in the past compared to while I was there, and the reason I felt like we were so dominant was competition. Um, we had numerous drills where the coaches put us in the worst situations possible. And, uh, you know, one situation that I always remember was Florida State week. They come bring out the bleachers. Uh, every NFL team would have at least two or three uh, members from their organization there scouting. So it was almost like a game. And mm -hmm. guys felt that this was my shot. This is how I'm going to get into the league. And to be honest, the energy in the locker room, which was going to be a three-hour practice, was almost like game mode. And 
it was somewhat of like an unspoken rule, like, look, today we're not teammates, bro. But honestly, when we were always out there, offense and defense was like that. We're not teammates, mm -hmm. right? We would never do anything malicious to try to hurt somebody. But the way that we competed, and I remember the drill that they used to put us through, we would start the practice off. We'd stretch, we'd go straight to goal line, full live, to the ground, balls on the one-yard line. It would be one offense versus two defense, and two, de uh, two defense versus one oh, offense. Yeah. And if the offense scored, the defense had to run a gasser and come back a goal and go against a fresh offense. Yeah. Like, when you think about, you know, iron sharpens iron or put you in the worst situations possible, because if I couldn't stop them when I was fresh, and now I just ran a gasser, and then now I'm coming against the ones, you know, how am I going to stop them now? So is that environment there, do, is the, their high-level competition, do you see at times where, you know, guys are biting down on their mouthpiece and really, really getting after it? Because I'll be honest, in the previous years, for me, it was too buddy-buddy. Too many drills that I saw where guys would lock up, get into it, and they blow the whistle before it goes to the ground. You don't know who won the play. You don't know who dominated. Yeah. Is that kind of the environment that's, that's, that's brewing over there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, competition is uh, everything in, in our program, and uh, Coach Chris Bell really brought that in and really made that a part of our culture and um, some of the ways we do it. I mean, like you said, we go goal line, too, uh, some practices and, you know, go full on. Uh, tackling. We don't do all the gassers and stuff. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's back in the day. Look, you, look, you know, let, let, let Highsmith tell you, he'll tell you they, yeah. didn't, they didn't take water breaks. Yeah. No water <laughs> breaks at all. So that, as the evolution goes further yeah. and further, every every old head comes back, and then the, the, they make their story worse and worse. So yeah. I'm telling you, they made us run gassers. Well, Highsmith is like, we do the same thing with gassers with no water break. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? All right, we're going to go through right now. I haven't come up with a name for this yet, right? I don't want to call it the hot seat or nothing like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a name, a phrase, or anything. You respond one word only. One word only. Uh, That's all you get. Mario Cristobal. Intense. Dade County. Busy. <laughs> uh, funny one right here. Cafecito. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> NIL. Money. This is the last one. Remember what we spoke about before? Yeah. When you got your one on one camera, I want you to look into this camera and give your answer. Tyler Van Dyke. Calm. Appreciate it, baby. Every year at Dime Live, we continue to try to take it to the next level. Fly merch, watch parties, now we're getting into the content game. Slide over to our YouTube channel, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications.